Hi. My question is about uh, the resistance and being able to uh, understand if it's unconscious resistance. If it is, you're not feeling any emotion about it, so it's irrelevant. If it's unconscious, there's no emotion. And if there's no emotion, it's not big enough to be a player. People worry about subconscious thoughts and subconscious things. If it's so sub that you're not feeling it, it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the doubts, the, even the, the subtle doubts that I might have. Well, um, you can usually feel a doubt. Yeah. Because if you're even describing it as a doubt, that means there's a desire that your doubt is playing against. So you're feeling that. That's one of the most wonderful things about negative emotion. It points out who you really are. Sometimes we say to people, if you're feeling strong discord, whether you call it doubt or pain, one thing it's really saying to you is there's something that you want that is on the table here. And the fact that you're feeling around it means it matters. Now we've sort of established that and we know you heard us. So continue with the premise that you came to chew on. It is being able to use uh, my internal GPS and to really understand the, the signals of that related to resistance because sometimes I think the s signals are very subtle and it's hard for me to grasp. Well, sometimes you have to poke at it a little bit to make it bigger. Oh. And while we're not really advocates of making something really big, bad and awful so that you can feel better, it's like if you hit yourself over the head with a hammer when you stop, you feel better, but you really haven't gained much. But there is something very helpful about acknowledging it enough to identify it. Because in the identifying what's off, there becomes an awareness of what's on. And now you have a plan of action. That's why Esther finds the words when we're offering the thought, I want to own it. Because if I'm not owning it, if I'm not acknowledging that I even feel this way, then I'm not going to note any progress. But if I acknowledge this is how I feel in relationship to something I want, now I'm going to feel the progress that is evidenced by relief at first and release at first and then increased positive momentum. So you want to talk about something? You want to talk about something that you feel some doubt about? I would like to be able to, you know, get up in front of groups to, to lead them in uh, meditative exercises and I have some resistance to taking those oh, steps to do that. So when you think about doing that, you feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Poke just for a moment at that discomfort and then we're going to help you to focus into comfort about it. So poke at it just a little bit. Something has happened that has made you feel that way or caused you to feel that way. So are you remembering it from a long time ago? Are you remembering it from yesterday? What is it that makes you feel this? And we could use the word insecurity, lack of confidence, yes. a fear. Success or failure. Yeah. So, so if it's a fear, fear is a stronger word. So let's start there. I fear what? I fear that. I fear what? I fear that I would leap into that direction and uh, I would fail, you know, doing it. All right, so give us a little more description. So is the fear that you'll stand up and they'll mock you and throw things at you? It's not like that, is it? No, it's like, will I be able to attract people? So the fear is that you'll stand there and you'll be all alone. Yeah, part of it. Well, poke around until you figure yeah. out what it is. Poke around just a little bit. It's some of all of that, but not really so much. What are you afraid of, really? And we're not making fun at all. Fear of the unknown? Don't know how it's going to play out? Fear that I'll jump into that and then I'll live in poverty? We're asking you to own what this fear is about. Yeah. And we're not, for a moment, calling it irrational. We're not calling it wrong. Because you've lived life. Life has taught you. And life has taught you to feel the way you feel about things. And life has also helped you to hatch a desire that your fears are contradicting. So your fears are in the way of your desires. And you know that or you wouldn't be having this conversation. Right. Identify the fear so that you know what your starting place is. Just try to speak it if you can. Trusting myself to be able to do it. 
I don't trust myself. I don't trust that I will know what to do. I don't trust that I'm good enough at this to do it in the way I want to. I don't trust that I'm ready. I don't trust that I'm good enough to do that. Good enough at it to do it. Good enough at that to do that. Pretty accurate statement, yes? Yeah. So now you know what your starting place is. So whenever you know what you don't want, you then know what you do want. And because we've sort of stayed focused with you until you really took the time to identify it, which is what the owning it process is. Because if you don't identify your starting place, you're not going to be able to notice your improvement. You're just going to keep covering up with words. Oh, I'll be fine. Or I'll know what to do. Well, maybe. But why not clean it up? Yes? I know what I don't want. I don't want to feel like this. I don't want to be unsure. What is it that I do want? So if we were doing a focus wheel, we'd take a piece of paper and right in the middle of it, we'd put a big circle and we'd write, I am. We would speak it as if it is, even though right now it's a lie. I am so tuned in that I lead others powerfully. We're going to keep saying it until it kind of clicks the way you want it. I am helping others but there's something else first I am able to tune to my own resources because it's only through that that you do help others and it's not doing that that you're sort of worried about so I am good at tuning to my resources now when we put it that way you're feeling a little relief with that but let's now make other statements around that center statement that shore it up that actually shift the way you feel i am recognizing my capability to do this all right i know when i'm tuned in and when i'm not my guidance system is alive and well because i can feel when i'm off and i can feel when i'm on i wouldn't stand before them unless i knew that i'm on i can tell when i am on and when i'm not so why would i go there if i'm not on I can practice being on until being tuned in, tapped in, turned on is something that I do on a really regular basis. In fact, I do do that on a really regular basis. It's only when I introduce other people to the concept that I lose my confidence, I am actually pretty good at this. I tune in and I resonate with my inner being on a regular basis. In fact, I think that's where these ideas are coming from. I think that my inner being knows how good I am at this, and my inner being knows how much I want to do this, and my inner being, we're riding around the edges, and my inner being knows that I was born to uplift and lead in this way, and that's why it's something that keeps coming up. It won't just go away. Now we're just going to ask you the question. We're asking you too, but we're asking you the question. Does it feel to you like having identified where you were off and then speaking what you want and now speaking it with more focus and deliberateness? Does it feel to you that you feel more ready right now in this minute than you did when we began this conversation? Absolutely. So you've moved. You're not in the same place. Your desire that was always there, you began moving in the direction of it. Now, did it fix all those insecurities all at once? No. But it sure did soothe them for now. And you do know what to do. So now let's say that a little time passes and that the momentum of alignment has subsided just a little bit. And now you're sitting down with another deliberate intention to soothe something. Now, why would anybody do a focus wheel? We would encourage you to do a focus wheel anytime you recognize you've got some offness going on within you. And anytime you've got any kind of negative emotion, you've got some offness going on, some contradiction of who you really are. So that blessed negative emotion is the beginning of every focus wheel. And every focus wheel is going to shift energy. So isn't this a fun thing to know? Absolutely. It's like a GPS. And you use those words, that internal guidance system. That's what it is. So now let's say that time has passed. You've been doing other things. And now something has happened. Maybe you see someone who you know could benefit by something that you've learned to do yourself. And you think about talking to them about it. But you feel this time not strong doubt, certainly not fear, but hesitation. You just feel hesitation. 
and you want to soothe them. You also think maybe you should mind your own business or whatever. And so when you stop to own how you're feeling, so you say to them, oh, you'll be fine. Or you say about them, oh, you'll be just fine. But those are just words. You don't even mean that. What you mean is, I see some things in you that are hindering you that I could help you get over. But I'm chicken to help you get over it because you might misunderstand my motives or you might think I'm weird. You with us? Just a little bit. So let's start there. I feel, what's the emotion that happened just now in all of that? The emotion that I want to feel? What are you in the situation like that? It's negative emotion, but what is it? How would you describe it? It's not fear, it's hesitation, but what does it feel like? Still insecure? It, it feels like I'm not sure that I should be the one to tell them in a, in a position of... I want to help them. Yes. And I want to be an uplifter. Yes. But I'm hesitant to do that because... Because they may have their own path of helping themselves. Oh, they want to feel better. We want you to really own this, and that's not it yet. So just stay with it till you see if you can figure it out. They might disapprove of me. Yeah, they, they might go, oh, that's kind of weird. I, I don't want not to only, hear from not you. Only, not only is it weird, it's... What's up with you, weirdo? <laughs> I know I've been complaining and it looks like I want help, but when you give it to me, I don't really want it. So if you were to really own what your hesitation is about, I might be misunderstood. Isn't that what it is? Didn't we touch the sore spot for most yeah. of you? I might be misunderstood. So now you know what your starting place is. I might be misunderstood. Well, what's on the other end of that stick? Being able to clearly communicate to them and have a vibration. When I'm tuned with my inner being, then I am understandable. So on the other end of I might be misunderstood, you might say, I want to come from clarity. Or you could hit it more head on. I want to be of value to this person. And my fear is that that person won't let me be of value. But you see, that person is irrelevant to the equation because you're the only one who can cause the wobble. It feels to you that it's about them and their response to you, but it isn't. It's about you and your perceived response of them to you. Yes. So now you're going to clean that up because your perceived response to them is the only thing that matters. And so now when you poke at your desire, I'm an uplifter. I was a born uplifter and I'm good at receiving and I can go for this. So let's do the focus wheel. I know what I don't want. I don't want to be misunderstood. I know what I do want. I want to help this person. I want to be valuable right now. I want to come from wholeness. I want to come from clarity. Now, we've just been poking around. Which of those statements feels like the most solid statement that you want to be the center point of your focus wheel? I am a clear being with infinite resources. I can do this. Yeah. So now, boom, just write one word. I am or something. You don't have to write all of that. Well, hold on just a second. <laughs> and you'll get better and better at this the more you do it. So you get that in the center of your focus wheel. And now shore it up with other things that you know, other things that aren't hard to reach for. And now you're there, it'll be easier because you're not there anymore. You're over here in this focus. When I get tuned in, good ideas come. And I really do care about this person. And I know that my inner being cares about this person and I know this person's inner being cares about this person's. And there's nothing serious going on here. It's just me feeling around for the purpose of soothing. I'm not trying to solve this person's life equation. I'm just trying to soothe them in this moment. I just want to tune in so that I am clear about what I say. I'm not even trying to tune in so that what I say fixes them. I just want to tune in about them. Because when I'm not tuned in, when I'm holding them as my object of attention and I'm not tuned in to who they really are, I feel bad. And I think it's their problem, but it's my problem. I'm not doing this focus wheel to make it better for them. I'm doing this focus wheel to make it better for me since I'm using them as my object of attention. Hey, you, who keeps talking to me about your life, I'm doing quite a bit of work so that I can talk to you without suffering. <laughs> I got to believe in you because 
you keep telling me what you want and I don't believe in you because I'm listening to your words instead of to my source.